Okay. Wow. It has been a minute since I made a video. Um, I haven't really had too much to make videos about. Been very busy. Um, unfortunately, just like the rest of you, I have a day job. So, been busy doing that. And uh, that's not nearly as fun as this stuff. So, this video, as you could probably tell, the first thing you noticed looks a bit different from some of the other videos I've done. And I really wish I could say it's because I'm going to be shooting on a C300 Mark II from here on out. That is not the case. Um, I did a shoot and I still have it because the rental is due back tomorrow. So we are taking full advantage of that. But I figured while I have uh, some pretty decent equipment, um, I should do a little bit of a recap video because there's been a lot going on in the film world. My own film world, not generically, but like my own film world. That's definitely worth talking about. I'm going to take us back to Nassau, Bahamas. So back in June, I went to Nassau with a couple buddies of mine. Uh, I took a brand new to me Fuji DL50, um, which is a tiny little plastic cheap point and shoot. And I'm happy with some of the results I got, um, but it's super in inconsistent. Definitely like a reusable disposable camera if that makes sense i kind of want to just go through some of these pictures and kind of just talk about the trip a little bit and kind of live relive the trip through these pictures so i do have my ipad here right in my lap oh i should probably tell you about what film i brought so i wasn't sure how much film or which film to bring i've never really been in a tropical environment with a film camera before so it does present its challenges that's direct sunlight pretty much all the time so definitely something with low ASA, um, at least 400 and under. So I brought some Loma Metropolis because there's a huge range that you could shoot uh, Loma Metropolis at. And then some Fuji Superior Extra 400. So like the really cheap stuff that you buy at CVS and Walgreens, um, even though it's really not that cheap. <laughs> Which is, you know, let's not talk about it. So there's like an overwhelming number of photos on this trip that straight up did not expose correctly. Um, I think it has to do with just the environments I was shooting in. Sometimes I was outside and then the camera would think we were in bright sunlight and we'd walk inside and take a photo. And I think because the camera is just so old or maybe I just don't know how to use it. Maybe I didn't have it set up correctly when I was taking some of these photos. So some of them didn't turn out at all. But then amongst the rubble, we have some good photos. Uh, the first one here. Um, I took of this footprint on the beach and I have to say when I first saw this photo come back I really struggled at the per at the perspective it kind of cast my own shadow taking the picture kind of Brings you to reality, but it kind of gives the impression based off the shadow within that footprint that it's almost 3d in effect So rather than it being a foot imprint it kind of looks like a foot sticking out of the sand which I thought was freaking cool so I didn't know that when I took the picture. Um, I wish I could tell you that that was my exact intention, but no, it just kind of turned out that way. I, uh, I have an edited version of this as a print. Um, yeah, I did edit this photo. Um, not the one you're seeing, but the one you're seeing now. Um, that one I did edit because I thought, I want to see what this looks like with just the footprint in it. And I did. So I clone stamped the hell out of that. And then I think I got a pretty nice print out of it. There's this other picture. When I tell you, like, I have zero control over how these photos turn out, I truly mean it. I When I took this photo, I don't think I expected anything spectacular at all. God, like, this photo, this photo to me might be one of my favorites I've ever taken. And it just happens so randomly. It's, it's just a tropical fever dream. That is what this photo is to me. It's just the way the sun is casting through all these plants. The lighting doesn't really make sense. It kind of has an illusion to it. If you zoom, I'm going to zoom in here. There's a fern right in the center of the photo. And because of how thin the, leaf, the leaves are on that plant, the sun just kind of goes right through it. But it casts the impression that it's underlit. And it just it looks a little surreal. Like it doesn't really make sense when you're looking at it but it does so it's kind of weird like seeing shadows beneath that yet also it's so lit um, by the sun 
and then the, on the left side of the photo there's like just this hue this cast of like sandy air and i think it's just the way the photo developed i don't even think it has to do with what it was it was a very clear day when i took this photo but i absolutely love that um there's this shot here of this donut just deflated donut tube what drew me to it was nothing spectacular about the location but just the way like the sprinkles contrasted with like everything else going on it just seems very out of place and i just thought it looked kind of neat um it also just kind of reminds me of like a dog on a leash for some reason i just thought it was kind of funny but i like that photo too so i brought loma metropolis because i expect to see a lot of tropical colors and metropolis has this like really muted look to it but it does really fun things with certain colors and one of those colors is red and in this photo i was in the right place at the right time and i cannot tell you how happy i was that i had loma metropolis in my camera when i took this photo it this shade of red is incredible like it just reminds me of like the moulin rouge um like the way i think of it when i think of the moulin rouge and i may sound like an idiot here because i've never been there but um i saw the movie and i also am vaguely familiar with the location and when i saw this color red i instantly thought of that movie and that location i may or may not be an idiot i may actually be right on the money here but like the pinstriping the font the theme salty dog souvenirs and ice cream it's just so cool and this is like very par for the course with the buildings in nassau um they all have like a uh, i don't even know they have their own distinguished look um but i have a lot to say about the bahamas in general um little side note obviously obviously the bahamas tourist industry is the heartbeat of the island and um you know the surrounding areas so 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 touristy very it was like cool to see happy to be there um i could totally be okay not going back and it, there's one thing too like i went there on a cruise and one thing that that really bothered me um and this didn't come as a surprise was just how um dirty and polluting cruise ships are um when you're in nassau and like you're walking around the streets there's like a smog of just exhaust from the cruise ships and it's just like ah, it kind of makes you feel dirty like i'm not saying like in the sense of ew like this is like a dirty like environment to be in like no like it kind of makes you feel bad for being a tourist um because you have this beautiful place and you're kind of just helping pollute it by just funding the cruise lines that take you there it's a double-edged sword because the island thrives off of the tourism i guess we all contribute it to it contribute to it in some way shape or form um i think i'd rather just fly there and you know <laughs> have a little bit of a less of a heavy conscience on it that was the bahamas in a nutshell next up here um i told you a lot's been going on so i need to update you on a new camera i bought so i picked up a nikon f2 um it's a nikon f2 photomatic uh silver body i have not completed the first roll i shot on it and i already know i messed it up I threw a more advanced Nikon lens on there and uh, I didn't, I cannot believe I made this mistake, but I didn't realize that the auto aperture in the lens would not work. I know that's ridiculous and stupid. I should have totally known that, but I think I was just so excited to start shooting on it that I just went out and did it. This next photo is not off of the F2. This is off of the Nikon FG. So I purchased a Nikon FG as well as a Nikon F2. I'm um, actually, this lens that is on the FG currently is the lens that I used that has the, you know, the auto aperture or whatnot. It's one of their D, one of their DX lenses. But I did get some pretty cool photos to somehow turn out. When I went out to shoot on the FG, I also had a um, Tokina 300 mil F2.8 lens that I also have some photos here that I want you to see. I want to show you this photo I took of 
a bathroom stall. So the photo I'm talking about that I shot on that lens and somehow got a photo has this like hum enormous vignette. Um, it kind of reminds me of like the old skater videos you'd see. You guys remember the show Scarred from like, M I think it was MTV. It was like that skater TV show and it was everybody falling and breaking arms and crap. Um, it was really messed up. I'm actually surprised they even had it on TV, but I remember it was hosted by Jacoby Shendix and um, I just, that very like skatery fish eyed look was very prominent in that show. The whole reason I just said that was because of the photos that turned out on that camera, the only ones that turned out were the ones where I was at like 18 millimeter on the lens. I've picked up an Nikon FG. I've picked up an Nikon F2 that I'm still working on getting through. So what else have I picked up? Uh, you may have seen it if I moved a little bit to the left here. I also picked up, and this was more money than I planned on spending. I picked up a Kawa 6. Short story about how I got this camera. Woke up one morning on my day off from work, hit Facebook Marketplace, saw this guy was clearing out an estate. There were like 20 cameras there. A lot of them were TLRs. Um, I originally went because he had a Bronica with like three or four different lenses and he wasn't specific on the pricing. I was like, oh my God, here we go. Finally gonna get a Bronica. I show up and he's like, I want $1,600 for it. And I'm looking at the camera and it's like, the leather's peeling off. It just looked bad, like it was B. Um, it was a wedding camera. So I passed on the Bronica and I looked over at the Kawa and before I had shown up, I'd done a little bit of research and I learned that these cameras and particularly their lenses are very, very, very sharp. I bought it. I was like, you know what? It's not what I showed up for, but I had like a lot of money on me. And I also still got a really good deal on the camera itself. I was okay with it. So I paid for that camera. And then I went out and I shot and I put two rolls through it. Second roll I put through it was a roll of uh, Kodak Gold 200. I just got a shot right here and Jack missed it. <laughs> This is down at Oranog Tower in Connecticut. It's like an old fire tower. These like sets of photos are actually all pretty good. So my favorite one is the one in the middle of this like little clover patch in the middle of the woods with this down tree. I just thought this was a really good scene. I guess the last last roll here is just a roll of ectochrome on the AE-1 that I shot a while back. One of my favorites is actually uh, this shot of the side of a box car with like all its texture. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I, I love texture in photographs. Like texture in photographs is just the freaking best. When it comes to themes of things that I like to take pictures of, I tend to steer more towards like decrepit, rundown, old, retro things. Um, when I see something that's sort of at the end of its lifespan, I'm like, oh yeah, like that's gonna be amazing. That's gonna be an awesome photo. I guess that's really all I had to talk about. Um, I haven't had a good opportunity to go out and like film myself doing things. Um, still working on that. It, the problem is I only have like one camera right now. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you liked it. If you did, hit the like button, hit the bell, subscribe, all the, all the classic things that YouTubers are supposed to tell their viewers to do. Um, like guys, I do this for a hobby, guys. I don't really, um, I try to upload at least like twice a month, you know, try to give you guys some good content for the film community. If you haven't already, check out shootretro.com, link down in the description. Um, that's just more of like our home base for like a, a space for film. So that's where I upload some of the newest photos before they even hit my Instagram, which you should also give a follow to at shoot retro. I think what I'm going to start doing is as I start getting these cameras, I think I'm just going to start giving some of them away. I really want to, I really want to grow the film photography community and I'm not just saying I, I want to reach first time photographers. I want to reach people of 
all experience levels within photography really allow them the experience of shooting on film because I really think it just does something incredible um, with our world and really just shapes it in a way I don't think we look at too often. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment down below on what cameras I should buy next with what little money I have. Um, and if we were to do a giveaway, let me know down below um, if you would participate because I would absolutely love to do that. So, all right, guys, I will see you in the next video.